Uh, it is my, oh boy, I don't want to get mad. It is my pleasure to introduce Sonia Contreras and Rob Bordeaux, who are going to tell you all about uh, what guests are going to be able to experience here uh, at the Lucasfilm Island Pavilion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Charlie. Thank you. We're excited to be here to, uh, for the first time ever, show stagecraft uh, here on this LED wall behind me. Uh, what you're seeing actually here is the real gear. This is being run by the real crew, and some of them are going to be right back on set on Monday morning. So uh, what do we mean when we talk about stagecraft and virtual production tools? We've actually been doing things like this for quite a few years. This is AI in 2001, behind the scenes. Um, as you know, the movie AI was directed um, at, was visual effects supervised by ILM legendary visual effects supervisor Dennis Muren. And um, this was the very first time we combined computer graphics and photography live on set. It took a lot of technology to do that back in 2001. Now you can do similar things like that on your phone. Maybe some of you are doing those kind of things right now with augmented reality apps. This is a version, a much more advanced version of that that you're standing in right now. So uh, building on that technology, uh, camera tracking, taking someone like Gareth Edwards' camera movements and pulling, pulling them into the computer so he can do the space shots in a movie like Rogue One in the same way that he was doing the rest of the photography because he held the camera a lot on his shoulder while he was photographing that show. In fact, Sonia, you were there helping to yeah, hide for some of this. That's right. Um, and that resulted in shots that were designed differently. They were creatively different solutions than if we didn't have these tools. So he had the idea in that, in that little volume where he was doing this capture of doing, of having this weapon uh, installed on the Death Star with that shadow wiping away and doing that reveal that ended up both in the trailer and in the film. And then later, building on some of the work that had been done on Rogue One, uh, we used rear projection technology, this was before LEDs could really do this quality of picture, to create an in-camera environment where you could photograph things like hyperspace and the Kessel Run in real time. And here you can see uh, our director of photography, Bradford Young, creating a whole new shot uh, for the first time. We've, we've shot hyperspace a lot, right? Many times over the 30 years leading up to Solo, but we've never shot a shot like this where you can actually see hyperspace reflected in Han Solo's eye in that moment of hope, uh, the first time he's ever in the Millennium Falcon going in hyperspace. So the whole idea is for these tools to be used to inspire the directors, the cast and the crew, to, to come up with whole new creative visions for our shows. Uh, since we're here, somebody's going to take us into a real location so you can experience what it's like to be on an island stagecraft stage. Yeah, you guys want to see how it actually works? So, some of you might be able to recognize this as the city of Salit from the TV series Obi-Wan. Um, what's being rendered right now, we have about 18 million pixels from wall, from wall edge to wall edge being rendered on these uh, LED uh, walls. And if you look at the, um, this is actually refreshing, it's real time. What that means is that it's refreshing at a frame rate that matches our camera over here. And so speaking of the camera, the whole trick here is that we're actually trying to make this work from the point of view of the camera. And if you look at the TV monitors to either end of the volume, you see what the camera is seeing. So what we're actually doing here is this red border that you see behind me represents the magic window that we call the frustum. And as the camera moves around the, wor the world, the frustum is redrawing and correcting the perspective so that we have an image that matches the camera. So if I can get a volunteer, we can put one of you guys inside Salit. All right, over here. Yeah, so this is different than like a painted backing. Hi. In that you? you can actually have an infinite amount of depth in the background and it, it looks, yeah. always looks correct from the camera's perspective. And you guys will have an opportunity to do this experience tomorrow as well. Um, but yeah, so as we can see as Drew stands there and the camera moves around him, and again, make sure that you're looking at the monitors, um, he is now immersed in the world. For us, that we're, when we're outside the volume and we're not looking through the monitors, you can actually see that the image is changing. But through the camera's point of view, it looks like he's in there. So you add a little light, a little lighting, a little set dressing, and some costumes, and boom, he's an extra in the world. Thank you so much, Drew. So that's what it looks like on set while we're shooting. Let me show you some of the shots from the picture as it comes together uh, in camera. So these were shot in the very same way that we're describing here on set. The volume that we shot this in was actually a bit larger, but if we pulled off the illusion together between the ILM visual effects team 
uh, the DP, the production department, the art department, you hopefully can't tell what's on the LED wall and what's real. Up uh, here's so, what we call a quad view, four views of the same shot. So you can actually see what it looks like behind the scenes when we shoot a scene like this. And interestingly, for this particular setup, the set decoration, set decoration is relatively sparse, but through the camera's perspective, it's just enough to pull off the illusion. I like this camera here too. Yeah, and we use blending techniques. We have a colorist that's usually working live with us during the production to make that transition seamless so that it doesn't, you can't perceive where the digital world begins and the practical world ends. And this environment in particular was really cool because as you can see in this shot, the, the camera is actually moving around the world, zigzagging in a way that it actually makes the environment look much larger than it actually is, when in fact, it's just, we're in a volume that's not too much bigger than this one. So um, yeah, some very clever uh, design of the camera moves in this one. So of course we can use it to go to crazy places that you've never seen before in Star Wars, but we can also bring any real world location onto the soundstage. That's right, so here we can go to the desert and with the click of a button we can go to San Francisco and then back to another desert environment. But we can, we can control these panels in a way that we can actually hold the lighting. Magic Hour is one of the, the DP's dreams to be able to shoot on this for eight hours. And we can do that in the volume because we can just pull that image for much longer than you would get if you were shooting outside. So for a very efficient team, a couple of people can go to a new location, bring that sound, bring that back to a sound stage, and you can go in four or five locations in one day, which is an amazing opportunity for a production to be able to bring that kind of production value into one sound stage. Um, this is an example. Uh, next that we're going to pull up for you is from Percy Jackson, and this was a shot, that, a, a scene that you shot up in Vancouver, actually. Yeah, that's right. We have a, we had a volume in Vancouver where we filmed this. And speaking of bringing the environment to us, um, we were in Vancouver and all the way to this is the Met in New York City. We brought the Met to us, and um, we did some really clever design here with the art department to, to figure out what needed to be practical and what could be digital to fit in the volume. And you can see, if we did our job right, that once we look at the final image, it's really hard to see the difference of what was real and what wasn't. The whole goal of all these tools is just to have another tool in the toolbox for our creatives. It always starts with a story. It's driven from there. And this next example is kind of fun because we're starting with the concept art. This is uh, Doug Chang and his art department do a lot of the design on our Star Wars films. And then we're using every technique in the book. In this case, there's 3D printing miniatures. There was a tabletop miniature that was built, painted, and scanned. And then we took that scanned 3D model and put it on an LED wall to create the final shot, the final illusion that you see in the show, which is actually pretty much, this, this shot uh, on its own is kind of a combination of every technique. There's computer graphics in there. In the background, there's some giant walkers that were stop motion animated by Phil Tippett and his team. Then you have amazing CG extensions and environments there, a miniature that's been turned to digital that's photographed on an LED screen, and then of course a huge art department build with special effects parts, kind of every trick in the book for the actors to be able to be immersed in the environment, for the camera team, and the whole team to work together to pull off an illusion like this. So the final thing we wanted to leave you with is an opportunity to go into hyperspace. It's a fun selfie moment. Maybe you can hand the camera to somebody next to you if you want to be immersed. Um, and we just wanted to thank you so much for coming by the Lucasfilm Pavilion to take a look at ILM Stagecraft. And I hope you have a great rest of your D23. All right, so you guys are ready for it. We're going to go into hyperspace. We're going to have the brain bar trigger us into hyperspace on one, two, three, go. There we go. Thank you all so very much.